forever. Dog. Welcome to Public Domain Theater with Kelly Nugent, Lindsay K. Tai, and guest Mike Carlson. Reading The Owl's Ear by Eric Monchatrion. Welcome to Public Domain Theater, the podcast of highbrow readings and lowbrow commentary. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And today we have a very special guest. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a comedian. Mm. You can now hear his podcast on theme parks, Podcast the Ride, right here on the Forever Dog Podcast Ooh. Network. It's Mike Carlson. Hey, hi. Hi. Hey, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That was like a Coming game show. Coming in energetic. A game show thing. Well, I felt like I was so low energy when I walked in here or I was so frazzled. I was like, well, let me compensate. And I did too much. I came in too hot. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Hey, so great to be hi. here. Thanks for having me. But that's not me. That's not how I am. That's not you. No. no. That's your alter ego. Um, Mickey Jumping Carlson. Jimmy. Jumping Jimmy. <laughs> Jumping Jimmy. I was going to say. Jumping Jimmy Carlson. I was going to say Wink. Mike Wink Carlson or something, but yeah. that's Wink Martindale from well, uh, Game Show, which I guess is Wink what Carlson. I was thinking. Yeah, Wink. What if my name was Wink? Wink. <laughs> Wink. What? Hi, I'm Wink. Hi, but you can call me Winky. I mean, I wouldn't sound like that. I would still sound like this. I don't think so. I think a name is a lie in a person. Hey, it nice to meet you. My tone. name. Nice to meet you. My name is Wink. Mm. That's how I would. I would even be yeah. deeper. Actually, oh yeah, because you're a game show host. It's like um, like when a you know ty- a guy named Tiny. Or a, man a boy named, named Sue, you know, right? Yeah, where it's or, like yeah, I'm the, opposite of that. If if a right. guy in prison is named Tiny, he's looking he's a big the guy, scariest guy in prison. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I think that's like that's more of a like a that's ironic nickname. I think. Yeah, that's as true. Opposed to yeah. Wink, name, which name. is just you know. Well, what? you liter- if you're if someone names you Tiny, you can't like literally make yourself large. Whereas like a voice is like sometimes a choice. That's true. Too. That's so there's true. a lot well, of voice holes is a in choice, this. actually. It's what we learn. The classic it's, saying, voice yeah. is a choice. Voice is a choice. Well, nature versus nurture. I mean, mm-hmm. how much of our voice are we born with? <laughs> right. Some. Right I think uh, some. A lot, you can I work think. On there are some people, when you talk to them, you can tell they can't control how their voice sounds. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's a health no, I'm issue. Not saying, <laughs> is that what you're talking I'm about? Not saying, I'm not saying like someone who's unwell. I just mean like there's people that have like little to no control over... Like, I don't know. This, uh, well, like Michelle Wolf always talks about how her voice is like kind of shrill right. mm-hmm. and high. Um, but then when you hear her interviewed, it's very low. Right. So uh, it's, yeah, so she like, is still pushing Because I could be talking like this. And in a different scenario, if I was raised by different parents, my voice could be up <laughs> here and I kind of speak in this way. Mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. because I'm who I am, I go back down here <laughs> and I sound like like a slightly more energetic Eeyore. And you can sound totally <laughs> different, too, based on mood. Did sure, you, of did course. Did you have well, sugar earlier? Like you in the said, day. you were frazzled and you were, you were frazzled. trying to jump mm-hmm. out of it. So you uh, amped it up. You amped it up into game show territory. So, do you like reading? <laughs> do I like reading? Actually, no. I'm bad you don't, at it. You hate it. So, I we're going to make you read it. out loud. Are you okay? I'm good at reading out loud. I've been told but that I'm very good at that. And maybe I have really? been told. Really? Like years ago in school or Who something. Who told you? Teacher. School teachers. They, they were like, we got to stop teachers. it. We got to stop the class. I got to tell, I got to tell young Wink that he's very good at reading. <laughs> Little Wink. Uh, Little Wink. He's from Chicago. So do that oh, in a Chicago oh. accent. Yeah. Okay. Chicago. Chicago. Sausages. Chicago. Sausages. Sausages. <laughs> Practice. You'll get there. Practice. Because they do a harder R, right? In Chicago? No. Because people, no. they do a, yeah. no, th- that's what Michael was saying. Yeah, that they that they do a harder art because a lot of people when they try to do oh, uh, they Chicago do accent Bronx, they do bro- they do is, Bronx yeah. which is like Offset. oh okay like a little different yeah yeah I don't I don't really how they sound hear like it in my voice that I say have um say um that Cute. pasta that's uh like baked pasta with like um uh cheese on it you Las- mean a pizza lasagna <laughs> no no <laughs> what like what about? we call here baked ziti ziti. But- but, but in Chicago, they call it something else. Masticholi. pizza? They call it masticholi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, masticholi. Yeah. I, I do know it is masticholi. Okay. You, there you they, go. Masta, masta, masticholi. Masticholi? The masticholi. I'm getting a little skoky there. The bears. Oh, my gosh. That's the thing everybody, yeah. Yeah. Most of the yeah bears. 30-year-old yeah, skeptics. looking to me like I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Lindsay, you know, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. The I'm very bears. good at accents, which comes up in literally every episode of both our podcasts now. And seriously, now, it is so much. And I think, honestly, that... <laughs> I'm feeling that, very sensitive about it. Well, producer Brad is trying to attack you right now because <gasps> this is a French... Author. What? <laughs> Brad? <laughs> 
tired of your <laughs> shit, bread. God you know what? damn it. Be professional. You're downgraded to pretzel. <laughs> I'll call you pretzel now from now on. Um, okay. So d- do we know anything about Erkman Chatrian? Uh, I know that bread hates me. Er- yeah. Erkman Chatrian? What is it? Chatrian. 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 I took French Here's the thing. Oh, yeah. I, yeah here we go. French. This is perfect. Because guess what? I don't know any French and I was making that up. That's okay. I don't know if right. it actually That's is. That's got to be right. Erkman it Chatrian. Sounds so right. Oh, yeah. Erkman, Chatrion. Erkman Chatrion. 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 I don't know. Chatrion. I don't know anything. Erkman Chatrion. Erkman. Okay. That well, sounds German. Guess yeah. what? That, that, it's that two first, people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's two fucking people. <gasps> guess what? What? They're both French authors. I'm sorry. What? Emile Erkman. What? And Alexandre oh. Chatrion. Oh. All, almost all of their works Everything are jointly makes written. makes sense now. They're our writing partners. Yeah. Like this is our Miller first. or something. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Or, like they, um, each one of them writes one or word. Or um, the, the, um, the Duffer brothers. Well. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I guess. Yeah. Do they write the Stranger Things? Yeah. Or do they just direct it? I think they, they wrote, wrote it. I well. think they, they creo- cre- creoled it. it. <laughs> they creoled it. <laughs> okay, so of the things that we know about them is that they are... Um, both born in 1822 and 1826, respectively, Erkman <gasps> and Chetrion. You didn't let me guess. Okay, when did Erkman die? Oh, fuck. 1822 is when okay. he's born. Okay. Come on, Lindsay, you um, can do it. 1896. Whoa. Very close. 1899. Oh, yeah. Wow. Whoa. You got good juju right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, Chetrion, 1826 was born. Okay. 1905. Oof. Way you know off. What? You flew mm. too close Way to the off. sun. I did. 1890. Uh, Damn it. Sad nine years for Erkman. 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 Um, <laughs> so they were both for born in uh, the town of Fallsburg in the extreme northeast of France. They were lifelong extreme. friends. Extreme. <laughs> extreme. Yeah. What does that mean? The most. Like the most, the tip of that's, it? The that's point? actually what the area is called. Like same way this would be like Los Angeles County. You were from extreme, extreme north, northeast, northeast France. France. <laughs> extreme. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. It was um, a province. The province of extreme northeast mm, France. Mm. Whoa. What? Drama. Get this. Okay. They rise to fame. 1860s. They publish uh-huh. a series of popular supernatural horror stories, often in rustic settings. But then they have a bitter quarrel in the mid 1880s, mm. after which they did not produce any more stories <gasps> jointly. So what was the cause of their bitter quarrel? A woman. Um, uh, religion. <laughs> oh. oh. there's. A, it's long, nice so guess. I'm not sure. I can't tell you if oh, either we'll of you are out. right. We're going to we'll find, find out. We'll find out soon. In the 1870s, in order to feed the bottomless appetite of their fan base, they start working on wow. projects separately, with okay. Erkman focusing on novels and short stories and Chatrion working on theatrical ad- adaptations of their works. Mm. Okay. So 18- they're more like Kurtzman and Orsi. And oh, they've yeah, since yeah. split up and they're doing yeah. their own thing. Got it. 1886, Erkman refuses to sign a new contract that's been negotiated by Chatrion with their publisher, Hetzel. Uh-oh. March 13th, 1887, Chatrion, at this time battling mental illness, wrote Whoa. to Erkman that he was paying ghostwriters out of their common royalties. Whoa. This was the end of their association and friendship. Hmm. That is... He stole money. I have not heard of that before. Yeah, interesting. That's like, hey, very interesting. I've like been paying ghostwriters out of our out royalties. Out of our joint earnings. Very interesting. Very wow. interesting. Hmm. Um, on 19th of August, uh, 1889, the former secretary of Chatrion published an article in Le Figaro attacking Erkman, who responded with a lawsuit. At about this time, the desperately ill Chatrion lost his reason entirely. He then uh-huh. died on September 3rd, 1890. Nine years later, Erkman died of diabetes. A festival in their honor is held every summer in Fallsburg. Really? Oh. It also contains a military museum exhibiting editions of their works. Dang. Oh, we got a fun little pic of them. This is nice. We can uh, put a face a to the name. Pic. Oh, That's sad new bread. stuff. Dude on the left looks like Louis C.K. I'm putting me in a bad mood now. Oh my God, he really does. Well, he looks like a mix of Louis C.K. and a professional wrestler named Terry Funk. <laughs> what do we think of the guy <laughs> on the right? Like Terry Funk. Guy on the right. Louis. Guy on the right looks very see. unique. Guy on the right. Very unique. Very unique. Kind of a Poe he's, hair style. He's like, oh, um, like a balding Poe. He's like a little bit. Um, he looks um, like the Muppet Count. 
uh, <laughs> John Belushi. Oh yes, yes, slash yes, yes, yes. The Count. Yes, yes, yes. Um, slash a walrus. Yeah, 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 yeah. He looks like the cartoon yeah. walrus in like. Um, this is Terry. Oh Funk. whoa, that looks very much like him. Oh what? Holy shit! Yeah. yeah, it's Terry Funk. Terry Funk is immortal. <laughs> it's Terry Funk. He's... Google that, guys. Wow. Everyone out there knows Terry Funk, but they have to look up these guys. Yep. Yeah, they have to look up yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Eric Mon and Shatrian. And then you go, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, Terry I Funk. see now, I see now. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, great. Fred, why didn't you say what the mental illness was? He doesn't know. He couldn't find Here's it. Here's the thing. It's he been lost to it. the annals of history. Um, okay. Well, do we want to read the the story? Yeah. So this is one of their joint I think works. that's what we do. We're going to be reading The Owl's Ear. Do owls have ears or do they just have holes? We'll find out. They, they have, have ears. ears, right? The little Aren't they, point. No, little these are not ears. <gasps> oh, you're right. They're, they're just, just like little, little like weird whiskery. Horns? Yeah, they're like. Yeah, they just got feather they horns. horns. They're devilish. They're <laughs> Satan. They're evil. Owls um, are evil as evidenced by um, Winnie the Pooh. It's true. What? They're evil and judgmental. So judgmental and okay. real snooty. Snooty. Okay, ready? The Owl's Ear. On the 29th of July, 1835, Caspar Boeck, a shepherd of the little village of Hirschweiler. Was that in extreme northeast France? Mm, I mean, that sounds like extreme southwest. Mm. With his large felt hat tipped back, his wallet of stringy sackcloth hanging at his hip, and his great tawny dog at his heels, presented himself at about nine o'clock in the evening at the house of the Burgomaster. Burgomaster? What is yeah. that? Petrus Maurer who had just finished supper and was taking a little glass of Kirschwasser to d facilitate <laughs> digestion. What are these words? Brett, why? I think Brett, like... <laughs> Brad. Brett. Okay, Brett had a, ate, like, a lot of pepperoni last night. <laughs> and he had, like, strange dreams. And then he, like, woke up and was like, I need to write down my strange dreams. <laughs> he wrote this. You think wrote this? Spicy dreams. I think, think he, wrote he wrote this. this? I think hmm. here's what he did. He, like, went and found all of the, like, food items and changed them to things that were in his dream. He's like, Kirschwasser... <laughs> Burgomaster. <laughs> the Burgomaster was a tall, thin man and wore a bushy gray mustache. He had seen service in the armies of the Archduke Charles. He had a jovial disposition and ruled the village, it is said, with his finger and with the rod. Oh. Well, was What's the what? finger? What's was the not finger? sparing a child. What's the finger, though? Um, maybe he wagged it in your face. Yeah. So he like, and then if you didn't obey him, he'd hit you. Yeah, fool me once, I wag in your he face. He was like, you do this thing, wagging his wag, finger. Wag, wag. And if you didn't do it, oh, he'd I see. Beat the shit out of you. It's like the carrot and the stick, finger and the rod. No, it's more like um, if you went, I have a rod, so do it. And they didn't, yeah. and then you used you the did. rod. Bop, bop, bop. Yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Now it's cleared up. Yeah. <laughs> now we. No. I think we're all on the same page. Yeah. Mr. Burgomaster, cried the shepherd in evident excitement. But Petrus Maurer, without awaiting the end of his speech, frowned and said, Casper Boeck, begin by taking off your hat, put your dog out of the room, and then speak distinctly, intelligibly, without <laughs> stammering, so that I may understand you. Is he a school teacher? Is that what that means? Finger and rod. Mm. Hereupon, the Burgomaster, standing near the table, tranquilly emptied his little glass and wiped his great gray mustachios indifferently oh multiple Mist mustachios plural he's got three. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. okay talent casper put his dog out and came back with his hat off well said petrus seeing that he was silent what has happened it happens that the spirit has appeared again in the ruins of geierstein okay, okay. <laughs> i doubt it you've seen it yourself very clearly, Mr. Burgomaster, without closing your eyes. <laughs> what? Yes, Mr. Burgomaster, my eyes were wide open. There was plenty of moonlight. Young made-up name, have you been seeing things on the inside of your eyelids again? <laughs> well, what form did it have? The form of a small man. Good. <laughs> and turning toward a glass door at the left. Cattell, cried the Burgomaster. An old serving woman opened the door. Sir, I'm going out for a walk on the hillside. Sit up for me until 10 o'clock. Here's the key. Yes, sir. Then the old soldier took down his gun from the hook over the door, examined the priming, and slung it over his shoulder. I'm going to go kill me a tiny man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to capture this tiny man. <laughs> then he addressed Casper Boeck. 
Go and tell the rural guard to meet me in the holly path and tell him behind the mill. Your spirit must be some marauder. But if it's a fox, I'll make a fine hood of it with long ear flaps. What the fuck is going on? What? I'm so confused. Are they all animals? Okay, here's what I think. He's like, the guy's like, I saw a spirit. And he's like, yeah, 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 what is it? And he's like, it's a tiny man. And he's like, oh, good. That's a guy. I will kill kill that guy. And uh-huh. if it's a fox, I'll make him a hat. But then they okay. were disbelieving him too? Yeah, yeah. it That's, seems right? like... So what the impression I'm getting is that the town has been talking about this little spirit thing. Yeah. And then Casper guy shows up. Yeah. He's like, I saw it. Yeah. And Berger is like, for real? And he's like, yeah, for real. My eyes were open and everything. That was so sad. Um, and he's like, great. Let me get my gun. Servant lady, I'll be back later. Call the army. We're going to go hunt this spirit. And um, maybe it's a fox. Yeah, maybe it's a fox. (laughs) That's all I'm getting. Maybe it's a fox. He's just, he's dotting his eyes, crossing his T's. Because it sounds like something they've all heard of before. Yes. Mm. And now they're like, we got him. Yeah. Master Petrus Marrer and humble Casper (laughs) then went out. The weather was superb. The stars innumerable. It's night. I guess it's night. I thought it was day. <laughs> While the shepherd went to knock at the rural guard's okay. door, the burgomaster plunged along the elder bushes in a little lane that wound around behind the old church. Two minutes later, Casper and Hans Gorner, winger at his side, by running, overtook Master Petrus in the holly path. Okay, okay so I guess uh-huh. now there's three of them. Right, they've caught up. All Great. three made their way together towards the ruins of Geierstein. Sure. These ruins. I guess that's where it would be. Be. This story is really talking to us like we yeah. know a lot of things about well, you know. this area and people mm-hmm. and the spirit already. And uh, Geierstein. And Geierstein. Yeah. Just Geierstein in general. Yeah. yeah. Who is that? Why is it? Geierstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know Geierstein. I've got, got to give no information. <laughs> okay, but who is this? Nah, you know. No, you know. Yeah, you know, Geierstein. Oh, you can't just yeah, keep repeating yeah, his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't give me more information. Geierstein. Were these guys local celebrities and they just had to write about the town that they <laughs> well, were you in? Know and what? It was like, <laughs> I think so. That's what it is. Maybe. Because so the, the like town if, has the festival. Right. It was like if you only had TV shows region specific, so yeah. every show you were watching was about the town you lived in. Yeah. Huh. So uh, X Files as a child Vancouver. would have been about Schomburg, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> they have the, my version of X Files. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I see what like, you're saying. I see. Yeah, what you're yeah. So they've been like, oh, you went to the CRC, and when you saw that that Wolfman had attacked all those uh, Park District, Schomburg Park District workers, yeah. <laughs> and then a regional Mulder and Scully would have solved the case by the end of the episode, <laughs> and then gone to uh, Portillo's Schomburg. <laughs> institution portillos yeah anyway, yeah so that's like yeah. what this is i think yeah okay so this is by the people for the people yeah okay right. these ruins which are 20 minutes walk from the village seem to be insignificant enough they consist of the ridges of a few decrepit walls from four to six feet high <laughs> i love thinking now at this point that people are reading it instead of like us going what they're going yeah 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 i know the ruins they're like we know, <laughs> we, know. It. we can see them from our windows <laughs> <laughs> which extend among the briar bushes Archaeologists call them the aqueducts of Serranus, the Roman camp of Holderlock, or the vestiges of Theodoric, according okay. to their fantasy. The only thing about these ruins could be considered remarkable is a stairway to a cistern cut in the rock. You know what I mean? This is like a this physics a professor who like, yeah, stands up in what? front of his class and he's like making super specific physics joke. And like you're there on your first day. Yeah. You walked into the advanced class by accident and every student in there is laughing because they've had three years of experience already. Yeah. And he wore sandals and to class like, today. Um, okay. He's like, this is a relaxed day. Yeah. I'm gonna, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. This, this is like a so, like, if I was watching that X Files related to Schaumburg, and they goofed on like my elementary school principal, Mr. Opalinsky. Yeah, and you'd and, be like, like, I I'd get like, it. I get it. Hell yeah. Yeah, that exactly. guy does have a funny mustache. <laughs> yeah, mustachios. <laughs> Plural. Multiple. Yeah. Inside of this spiral staircase, instead of concentric circles which twist around with each complete turn, the involutions become wider as they proceed, in such a way that the the bottom of the pit is three times as large as the opening. Is it an architectural freak or did some reasonable cause determine such odd construction? It matters little to us. The result was to cause in the cistern that vague reverberation which anyone may hear upon placing a shell at his ear to make you aware of steps on the gravel path, murmurs of the air, rustling of the leaves, and even distant words spoken by people passing in the foot of the hill. What? 
I'm it's so echoey in there. So it's echoey in uh, the thing. Okay, here's what it looks like. Uh, if any of you guys have ever played Skyrim, I think this is what it is like. When you're like I running around, it. you uh, happen upon a ruin that's like a mound, and then you go down the stairs, and it's like wider at the bottom because it's like a hollowed out mound. Super echoey. It's echoey in there. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. Just no, it's very. No, I echoey. believe you. I'm echoey just saying the way the we got there was unnecessary. You could just say it was echoey. Yeah. Um, our three personages then followed the pathway between the vineyards and the gardens of Hirschviller. I see nothing, the burgomaster would say, turning up his nose derisively. You just got Nor there. Nor I either, mm-hmm. the rural guard would repeat, imitating the other's tone. It's down in the hole, muttered the shepherd. <laughs> we shall see, we shall see, returned the burgomaster. It was Why in- were they so eager to go on this trip if they're going to be such bitches to Casper? I know they're so mean to him. I they're just they want to kill a man. They, they're going to they kill they're going to kill, kill Casper. Huh. I'm scared. It was in this fashion after a quarter of an hour that they came upon the opening of the cistern. As I have said, the night was clear, limpid, and perfectly still. Limpid? Yeah, like the um the incredible <laughs> Mr. Incredible Mr. Limpid. Mr. Limpid. The Don you. Knotts movie. From- Thank you. I'm it's limpid is limpid, the name of the movie. Yeah. Mm. So. That would be the hilarious Mad Magazine yeah. parody of it or something. This works more if you uh, live with me and Mike and have the same references. Mm-hmm. The moon portrayed, as far as the eye could reach, one of those nocturnal landscapes in bluish lines studded with slim trees, the shadows of which seemed to have been drawn with a black crayon. The blooming briar and bloom perfumed the air with a rather sharp odor, and the frogs of a neighboring swamp sang their oily anthem, interspersed Ugh. with silences. Yeah, what? Oily anthem? What does that mean? It means... Frogs are nasty. <laughs> they're nasty. They're like, we're no. nasty frogs. Does it sound like they're like phlegmy when they talk? I like, get, oh, like oh, I oh. think of, <laughs> I'm the mucinex guy. Well, to me, oily sug- suggests like. Sl- sure, I agree. I guess frogs are Maybe slimy. Maybe like, like lilting. But their voices are Whoa. slimy. Yeah. I feel like a frog's voice is very hoarse and it's scratchy. Like, rah, rah. Yeah. But this, these were well lubricated frogs. They, yeah, they, they were getting ready ready for their performance drink later. So they, yeah, so they drank, yeah, with some Honey coconut and, oil in it. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah just really lubed mm-hmm. it up. But all these details escaped the notice of our good rustics. They thought nothing they thought of nothing but laying hands on the spirit. Spirit I tell spirit. It. When they had reached the stairway, all three stopped and listened, then gazed into the dark shadows. Nothing appeared. Nothing stirred. The devil, said the Burgomaster. That was spelled a lot more straightforwardly than I was expecting. Burgomaster. Burgomaster. Mm-hmm. We forgot to bring a bit of candle. Descend, Casper. You know the way better than oh I. Oh, my God. I'll follow you. <laughs> he just shoves him down. <laughs> yeah. Get down there. You're the canary in the coal mine, Casper. <laughs> Push. At this proposition, the shepherd recoiled promptly. If he had consulted his inclinations, the poor man would have taken to flight. His pitiful expression made the burgomaster burst out laughing. These guys fucking suck. They're mean. Well, Hans, since he doesn't want to go down, show me the way, he said to the game warden. But Mr. Burgomaster, said the latter, you know very well that steps are missing. We should risk breaking our necks. Wow, he was about to make Casper just go down into some steps? Into these were ruins missing? at night? Hmm. The moon isn't even bright oh, enough. Boy. It's not nice. Then what's to be done? Yes, what's to be done? Send your dog, replied Petrus. I don't like that at all. What? The Why shepherd whistled whistle to morning? his dogs. His dog showed him the stairway, urged him, but he did not wish to take the chances any more than the others. At this moment, a bright idea struck the rural guardsman. Ha! Mr. Burgomaster, said he, if you should fire your gun inside. What? Face. Shoot in the hole? I guess. And then, like, you for are a so quick stupid. second, oh my God. we'll have a burst of light, and then we'll all burn it into our memories. <laughs> all right, everyone remembers where everything is, right? Yep, got it. <laughs> everyone remembers all the steps that were missing, <laughs> right? 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 And it was the, the third, sixth, payment. seventh, yes. ninth. And uh, the, uh, the length of each step was such and such, and then the depth. Oh, my gosh. Okay, sure. Shoot into Whenever. the hole in the ruin. Faith, cried the other. You're right. We shall catch a glimpse at least. And without hesitating, the worthy man approached the stairway and leveled his gun. But by the acoustic effect, which I have already pointed out. Oh, so echoey. Mm, echoey. Oh, no. The spirit, the marauder, <gasps> the individual who hmm. chanced to be actually in the cistern what? had heard 
everything. What? The idea of stopping a gunshot did not strike him as amusing, for in a shrill, pier- in a shrill piercing tone, he cried, Stop! Don't fire! What? I'm coming! Ah. Wait, there's someone in there for it's real? It's the spirit. A tiny man. Spirit. It's the with spirit. A sh- spirit. With a less than oily voice. Yeah. Ah. Then the three functionaries looked at each other and laughed softly, and the burgomaster, leaning over the opening again, cried rudely, Be quick about it, you varlet, or I'll shoot. Be quick about it. Hmm? He cocked his gun, and the click seemed to hasten the ascent of the mysterious person. They heard him rolling down some stones. Nevertheless, it took him another minute before he appeared, the cistern being at least a depth of 60 feet. What was this man doing in such deep darkness? He must be some great criminal. So at least thought Petrus Mar and his acolytes. At last, a vague form could be discerned in the dark. Discerned in the dark. Excuse me. Then slowly, <laughs> by degrees, a little man, four and a half feet high at the most, hmm. frail, ragged, his face withered and yellow, his eye gleaming like a magpie's, and it, you know how magpie's hair is gleaming. His hair tangled, came out shouting, by what do you? By what right do you come to disturb my studies, yeah, wretched creatures? Exactly. Hmm. I'm yeah, on his by side. What right, indeed. By what right? His studies, though. He's probably he's doing studying some... something in a dark. Yeah, yeah. Room? He's he's got well, some like apothecaries. Who knows how like well, his eyes can see. That's a good point. It glows yeah. like a magpie. Yeah. Well, and again, we all know how magpies' eyes glow. They glow. Yeah, we know. They glow. The glow of the magpie's eye. <laughs> It's that Irish folk song okay. oh, yeah. that we all I, love. We all know that. We all know it. Mm-hmm. This grandiose apostrophe was scarcely in accord with his costume and physiognomy. What? <laughs> okay, wait. Sorry. Say that one more time. Well, this grandiose apostrophe, yeah. which I will take to mean the like swagger with which he sure. delivered that statement. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a line in a Red Chili Peppers song. Yeah. Grandiose apostrophe. Yeah, uh, then the next part, too. <laughs> was scarcely in accord with his costume and physiognomy. Yes, exactly. Wait, can I see it really quick? <laughs> that is for sure a lyric on Californication yeah. or some... Uh, or what is it? It's... Uh, are you going to do it? Yeah. There? It's those two lines together. The grandiose apostrophe was scarcely in accord with his costume and physiognomy. Yeah, there you go. I was actually <laughs> thinking rhyming. it was more in the rap part, but yeah, that's actually good better probably in the chorus. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. That's the new chorus. Uh, yeah. That's a chorus. I'm like c- collaborating with RHCP. I feel like Red Hot Chili Peppers got super like shanty. <laughs> yeah, at the, end, at the end, it got a little like sea On shanty. Me. It, I definitely was doing like the arm thing sure. that we like the, to do. Yeah, the, the, the um, idea, drunken, idea, idea. That was yeah. a demo of yeah, it, yeah. That wasn't the full Rick Rubin yeah, produced yeah, yeah. track. But you were here for it first. Where Uh-oh. were you? Remember. Accordingly, the burgomaster indignantly replied, Try to show that you're honest, you knave, or I'll begin by administering a correction. Mm. A correction, Uh. said the little man, leaping with anger and drawing himself up under the nose of the burgomaster. (laughs) Hope they don't say it. Yes, replied the other, who nevertheless did not fail to admire the pygmy's courage. If you do not answer the question satisfactorily, I am going to put to you, I am the burgomaster of Hishwiller. Hishwiller, excuse me. Uh, what the yeah, fuck it does is mean that? he's some sort of troll. teacher. He's a troll. Oh, yeah, the, the little spirit's guy. a little troll. Right. And oh, the burgomaster is a sorry. teacher. Right, he's a right, teacher? Right. of some kind. And then the other guy's a guard. And then the other guy's a shepherd with a dog. Sorry. Shepherd with a dog. Yeah. Uh, keep up. I'm zoning out. I'm sorry. <laughs> My attention is bad. That's why I'm a bad reader. <laughs> We'd love to have bad readers on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am the burgomaster of Hirschwiller. Here are the rural guard, the shepherd and his dog. We are stronger than you. Be wise and tell me peaceably who you are, what you are doing here, and why you do not dare to appear in broad daylight. Then we shall see what's to be done with you. Why do they give a shit? Why do they care? It's Nobody even goes into that that pit. Because they're bored. What the fuck else are they doing? It's what, like, they heard about an elf. They want to, like, want to go fuck with it. Show off with their men or whatever. (laughs) Hey, let's go, uh, let's go poke this elf with a stick. (laughs) 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 Let's go force him out of his little hole that he lives in. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bored. (laughs) Regional television hasn't been invented yet. I'm really looking forward to what our X Files will be like. All that's none of your business, replied the little man in nice. his cracked voice. Sure. I shall not answer. Nice. 
In that case, forward march, ordered the burgomaster, who grasped him firmly by the nape of, nape of the neck. Ew, he touched him? I would not mm. touch a yeah. little guy that I found yeah. in a pit. <laughs> pit. <laughs> not. I would not. No, I would not. Ew, I would not. In a pet. I would not. <laughs> Hello. Ew, Shower. What? <laughs> you are going to sleep in prison. Uh, the little oh. man rushed. <laughs> I did not yeah. that sentence. You're going to sleep in prison? Yeah. <laughs> Take him to prison. Okay, I mean, <laughs> you're going to sleep in prison. What do you mean on. for a night? <laughs> yeah, they're taking him to jail because he How won't say who he sleep? is. I, it's just so. Much. <laughs> but does he mean like this is a night? This is one night you're going to sleep gonna, in prison tonight. Yeah, yeah. Or does he mean you're sleeping gonna, in prison from now on? From now on. Or does he mean I'm going to kill you in prison? Oh, no, he's with the fishes. I think you're it's gonna sleep with I prison. think it's probably at least a night. At least the first one, yeah. A night or more. Mm-hmm. They're promising at least one night of prison. Mm-hmm. The little man writhed like a weasel. He even Ew. tried to bite, oh, and the God. dog was sniffing at the calves of his legs. This is so sad. This is really sad, and also just gross. He's writhing like a weasel. He's, they, I, I, I would never touch that guy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding? Touch Are a man kidding? in a pit? Oh, he was in a pit, and then he writhed. <laughs> Ew, he's going to pit. You're going to put him in another pit. Ew, it go to sleep in prison. It doesn't describe him as oily or anything, though, so I'm less grossed oh, out. Just because writhing yeah. makes sense to he's, me in that instance. He's trying to get away. Yeah. He also is actually dry. He's He's very dry. His throat also, is very so dry. dry. He's very yeah. dry. So you wouldn't even get any residue on your hand. Now that so you mentioned it, I do think the word oily was stuck in my head from the frogs. The frogs. Yes. I was associating it with our writhing, little yes, writhing, man. Writhing is a, I've often, it's just sexual, I think, used in a sexual connotation, but not here. He's a wriggly no, delight, just, just like I these just, gummy worms. I, here's the thing. Yes. I don't need to touch a person that's writhing. That's all I'm saying. Well, sh- no, sure. I don't, I don't want to be That's why they part. writhe. They want me to touch them? To repel you. Oh, to repel me. Yeah. They're like, like, oh shit, Kelly's coming. Get to writhing, guys. (laughs) Is that part of writhing? Yeah, you have to do that noise. It's okay. You'll you'll get it. Otherwise, how will people be sure that you're writhing? They might be like, oh, they're itchy. Because if you don't go, then you're just squirming. Yeah. Mm. And squirming is different. Squirming. Squirming starts with S, silent writhing. Yes. But that's how you remember. Mm. Yeah. It's a mnemonic thing. Mm-hmm. Mm. And the dog was sniffing at the calves of his legs when, quite exhausted, he said, not without a certain dignity, oh. let go, sir. <laughs> I surrender to superior force. I'm yours. The burgomaster, who was not entirely lacking in good breeding, became calmer. Do you promise? Said he. I promise. Very well. Walk in front. And that is how on the night... <laughs> Of the 29th of July, 1835. Oh. Oh, it's a history We're lesson. We're learning the night now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, this is based on a true story. Oh. Mm. That's. That's why it was trying to get oh. all those details so exact. Mm. It felt obligated to the source material. And the burgomaster took captive a little red-haired man. Oh, okay. A uh, new picture. <gasps> Leprechaun. Issuing. Issuing. <laughs> issuing. Issuing from the cavern of Geierstein. Upon arriving at Hirschwiller, the rural guard ran to find the key of the prison, and the vagabond was locked in the double-locked not... What? Was locked and double-locked, not to forget the outside bolt and padlock. Everyone then could repose after his fatigues, and Petrus Maurer went to bed and dreamed till midnight of this singular adventure. On the morrow, toward nine o'clock, Hans Gerner, the rural rural guard... This is real mean to do to a person to keep saying rural. 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 The rural guard, having been ordered to bring the prisoner to the townhouse for another examination, repaired to the, yep, repaired, repaired to the cooler with four husky daredevils. Oh my gosh. Uh, Wait, what? These gentlemen. Wait, what? I don't like this. Can we spin them them off on their own? Daredevils. (laughs) Is there a spinoff story? We could stop reading this and read about them. I'm Chet and I'm Jeff. (laughs) Because I. The whole story, Stat- I've been confused, and then I've kind of been like, okay, they're hassling an old man, but then I hear about these hey, four gentlemen. These husky, husky daredevils. Dare well, we, like uh, we like to jump over logs. <laughs> My blood pressure went way up. <laughs> uh, yes, please. <gasps> they open the door, all of them curious to look upon the will-o'-the-wisp. But oh, imagine- he's a will-o'-the-wisp. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. a red-haired, four-foot-tall will-o'-the-wisp. Mm-hmm, will-o'-the-wisp. Will-o'-the-wisp. Mm-hmm. Pardon. Oh, the wisp but imagine their astonishment upon seeing him hanging from the bars of the window by his necktie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Jeez. I'm sorry, Autoerotic Bread. asphyxiation. What? 
bread this is ate upsetting. so much pepperoni last night. <laughs> <It's> crazy <laughs> fucking dream. Oh, oh, man. He hanged himself? I can't believe this. this they never should have taken him out of that pit. This gets upsetting. Some said that he was still writhing. Others that he was Ew, already was still stiff. writhing? Oh, God. However that may be, they ran to Petrus Maurer's house, Maurer's house to ref- <laughs> my God, to inform him of the fact. And what is certain is that upon the latter's arrival, the little man had breathed his last. Well, dang. What is this? Who the fuck murdered this little man? Where can this we go from all here? Over the place. Where do we go from here? Yeah. Uh, why? Don't. Okay, this story is not sticking to acceptable screenplay story structure. Uh, no. Uh, like, we needed to know what this was about within a shorter period of time, and this has taken too much of a turn. Those the French, justice... Sorry, mm-hmm. I was going to say, those French brothers need to read McKee, uh, McKee Robert McKee's story book yeah. or Save the mm-hmm. Cat. Or, um, or... Because right now the Burgomaster is screen, irredeemable. Take a screenplay yeah. class from several out of work writers Improv over, the, over the Los Angeles area. <laughs> the Justice of the Peace and Doctor of Hirschwiller drew up a formal statement of the catastrophe. Then they buried the unknown in a field of meadow grass and it was all over! Exclamation. <laughs> that sounds like a lie, but okay. Mm-hmm. Now about three weeks after these occurrences, I went to see my cousin. I? I? When did that? What? <laughs> Wait, Steve? <laughs> Is that you? Steve. It's been Steve telling this story this whole this time. time. Uh, how the hell are you, Steve? This is all over the place. <laughs> what? Did Janet this ever story. make that topo casserole? <laughs> <laughs> she did, and it didn't come out the same uh, way as when your you wife what? makes it. That's the thing. It did. It's because she soaks it in milk. Well, that wasn't in the oh, recipe. That's candy secret. <sighs> you oh, scam- man. Steve. I can't believe Steve's coming out of the woodwork here. Oh, boy. Now, about three weeks after these occurrences, I went to see my cousin. Get this, you guys. What? Petrus Maurer. Oh, shit. This huh? has been Petrus's cousin this telling us this story? This has been some fucking secondhand bullshit. Whose nearest relative I was, and consequently his heir. This circumstance sustained an intimate acquaintance between us. We were at dinner. I'm real tired of these stories. Where we are, where the author is telling them as someone else's story. Yeah, I also hate like we've had a couple stories like this where they're like, um, also by the way, like someone told me this at dinner. Exactly, and it's like, oh, cool. Okay, so but that's how I, weren't they probably just imitating like how every like in the old days exactly the people it's always like oral would say I was this was passed to me and then True. but they're just writing it down. Yeah, it's not. It's not necessary, Folklore. of course, but it's all like. I think that might make it like even more mysterious. It's a way of squirming it out, and it's of... also to make it seem more real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. and it, it makes it sound like um like oral storytelling or like oral uh, history, kind of. Like I heard about this from an old yeah. man like down like, the river. Yeah, and then that makes it more legitimate because who could that like instead of you just telling yeah. me and be like you know you guys get it yeah, yeah i find it to be a very story. cheap device but oh, yeah, this sure is the thing because we're hip to it now we're like we're i see what you're including. doing yeah we should get a time machine and go tell this guy and these guys is bullshit yeah, yeah just unnecessary take that out maybe this is written by that fucking ghostwriter you should go oh back. shit you should go back and do, take some of these stories and edit them and then read the edited versions how you would have edited if you were a copy editor that like should be our third the podcast. Day. The third podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing I have is too much time. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're just, like, too, we're just like, we're just like, there's too much time. Too few podcasts, too, too much, much time. time. Mm-hmm. As the saying goes. That's, as the saying goes. We were at dinner ta- talking we on indifferent dinner? matters. God. Oh, boy. We were at dinner talking on indifferent matters when the Burgomaster recounted the foregoing little story as I have just reported it. Cool. Yeah, great. Tis strange, cousin, said I, truly strange. And you have no other information concerning the unknown? None. And have you found nothing which could give you a clue as to his purpose? Absolutely nothing, Christian. Oh, he has a name. Oh, our narrator's Christian. Our narrator, Christian. Great. Oh, he's of the faith. (laughs) Hmm. Well, thank God. (laughs) Thank G-O-D, I should say. But, as a matter of fact, what could he have been doing in the cistern? On what did he live? The burgomaster shrugged his shoulders, refilled our glasses, and replied with, Dear health cousin. 
Wow, wow. Rude. Really, 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 really rude. Really skirting really issue. To your health cousin. Oh, to your health. I said you had a dear health cousin. Dear health cousin. <laughs> to yours. We remained silent a few minutes. It was Awkward. impossible for me to accept the abrupt conclusion of the adventure. Same. And in spite of myself, I mused with some melancholy on the sad fate of certain men who appear and disappear in this world, like the grass of the field, without leaving the least memory or least regret. Aww. He's thoughtful. That's nice. That is we nice. like Christian. Yeah, yeah we yeah. do like Christian. I think we're on Team Sorry Christian. Suck. Cousin, I resumed. How far may it be from here to the ruins of yes, Geierstein? Yes, go back. Yeah, good. 20 minutes walk at the most. Why? Because I should like to see them. You know that we have a meeting of the municipal council and that I can't accompany you. Oh, see, the thing is, that sounds really fucking boring and I want to go see this troll. Oh, I can find them by myself. Oh, nice. No, the rural guard will show you the way. He has nothing better to do. <laughs> and my worthy cousin, having rapped on his glass, called his servant. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Could tell. Go and find Hans Gerner. Let him hurry and get here by two o'clock. I must be going. The servant went out and the rural guard was not tardy in coming. He was directed to take me to the ruins. It's Michael's turn. Dun, dun, dun. Is this about the husky daredevils, do you think? No. I mean, I hope, <laughs> hopefully they come into play. Hopefully they Suddenly do. the story in Mike's hand is going to take a hard turn. He's like <laughs> into being room, about... Vroom, <laughs> vroom. Four motorbikes revved up. <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, is it while the burger master? Is that where I'm starting? Sorry. Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah. Missed. Okay. Uh, while the burger master proceeded gravely toward the hall of the municipal council, we were already climbing the hill. Hans Gerner, with a wave of the hand, indicated the remains of the aqueduct. At the same moment, the rocky ribs of the plateau, the blue distances of, what was it? Hunstruck? What did we call it? Or is that a different thing? Hunstruck. Hunstruck? Never seen that word before. That's new, right? That's new. Let me okay. see. Oh, man, I'm panicked. And it has, a, so it has panic, a umlaut like, oh, okay. over the U. I was like, oh, Carlson, you zoned out again and you missed one of no, those no, weird no. names. No, that's but new. that's new, right? That's new. I'd, I'd not seen a, an umlaut before of yeah. the story. Hunstruck. 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 Okay, this is another regional thing where it's like we're all supposed to They're know like, oh, oh, yeah, we it's know like, that place. It's uh, like the Woodfield Shopping Mall. Yes, there we thank go. you, another Schaumburg icon. <laughs> the sad, crumbling walls covered with somber ivy, the tolling of the Hirschwiller bell summoning the notables to the council, the rural guardsmen uh, panting and catching at the brambles, <laughs> assumed in my eyes a sad and severe tinge mm. for which I could not account. It was the story of the hanged man which took the color out of the prospect. Yeah, you're on the, that's the whole thing that you're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. Uh, the cistern staircase struck me as being exceedingly curious with Is its elegant spiral. Um, it doesn't say right, anything about right. that here. <laughs> I'll still help peruse. Uh, yeah. The bushes bristling in the fissures at every step. The deserted aspects of its surroundings all harmonize with my sadness. Oh. Mm. We descended and soon the luminous point of the opening which seemed to contract more and more and to take the shape of a star with curved rays alone sent us its pale light. Wow. Do you remember to bring some fucking candles this time, you idiots? It doesn't oh, say that. No, they're mm. just following this Be weird starlight. They're just going to set off some firecrackers in there and hope that the, <laughs> it lights it up. <laughs> We've got some sparklers. Uh, when we attained the very bottom of the cistern, we found a superb sight was to be had of all those steps. <gasps> oh, shit. Lighted from above and cutting off their shadows with marvelous precision. I then heard the hum of which I have already spoken. Huh? The immense granite conch oh, right. had as many yeah. echoes as stones. Gotcha. Uh, I also feel like I'm about to go into like Orson Welles. Or like, <laughs> yeah. Feel free. We know a remote farm <laughs> where Mrs. Buckley lives. Uh, has nobody been down here since the little man? I asked the rural guardsman. No, sir. The peasants are afraid. They imagine that the hanged man will return. And you? I. Oh, I'm not curious, but the justice of the peace. I'm quite stupid and uninterested in things. <laughs> His duty was to, ha! Oh. What could he have come to the owl's ear for? They mm. call this the owl's ear? It took a while to get to that okay. titular line. Here we line. go, here we yes. go. Yes. Money That's shot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Money. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, shot mm, money. Sure. Uh, money sentence, maybe? <laughs> money line. Money line is good. Uh, yes. That's pretty near it, said I, raising my eyes. This reversed vault forms the pavilion well enough. The underside of the steps make the covering of the tympanum. Tympanum? 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 Maybe tympanum. Uh, tympanum is plural for tympany. 
There's, there's just a bunch of timpani down there to play <laughs> when the orchestra comes timpani. to town and goes onto the ruins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Owl's timpanum. ear, you will be saying. <laughs> and the winding of the staircase. The cochlea. Cochlea. <laughs> cochlea. The labyrinth and vestibule of the ear. That is the cause of the murmur which we hear. Okay. We are at the back of a colossal ear. Wait, okay. literally? A so literal ear? A literal on. owl? I'm not sure if he means Ooh. that like the acoustics in there are they work very similarly to okay. how an ear works. Um, it's very likely, said Hans Gerner, who did not seem to who did not seem to have understood my observations. Neither did we. <laughs> we started up again, and I had ascended the first steps when I felt something crush under my foot. I stopped to see what it could be, and at that moment perceived a white object before me. It was a torn sheet of paper. As Whoa. For the, yes. Holy Shut fucking your shit. Fucking a piece of there fucking paper? There is a torn piece be, of paper? To be fair, I took a pause after that because I was like, my needed to swallow. Oh, so okay. it made it seem like that was the end of a paragraph and made it seem like they were trying <laughs> to underline that. Story. You know I'm what? You performed it how you performed it. Stand by your performance. I do stand by it. I'm just saying. Don't undercut it's the my bit. fault. Don't not, undercut the bit. I didn't mean to undercut. <laughs> I was just saying that I ruined this great piece of writing. As for the hard <laughs> objects, which I had felt grinding up, I recognized nice. it as sort of a glazed earthenware jug. <laughs> Wait, you thought it was the a piece paper? of paper was a an jug? earthenware jug? <laughs> well, the hard, he said, oh. as for the hard objects. Oh, okay. This story okay. is so hard. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so there's paper and a mug, jug. There's cool, a jug, cool, 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 a, cool. a glazing earthenware jug and a torn piece of paper. Okay, so these are his possessions. This is his toilet. Are... This is that guy's toilet. <laughs> Well, he's po- he's pooping, pooping oh, into a jug. Oh, and that's his reading material re- while he poops. And then after he's done, he uses it to clean. Oh, Poop. he just uses the same piece of paper. Over and over. I hope the jug has a. <laughs> this is so sad. Oh, this is disgusting. They're like, what are you doing down there? And he's like, research. <laughs> <laughs> I have to finish my schooling. <laughs> <laughs> My research is none of your business. <laughs> I'm imagining him like sitting on the jug too. <laughs> his little it's butt. Weird. His little it's butt no in the jug. Because the, a jug has just no, such a, a tiny t- opening. It's a tiny opening. If you were to play it back, I was about to hear on me go, well, a jug has, I hope it's got a bigger opening. And I said it real quietly. But yes, that was my first concern about pooping into a jug. <laughs> Is that, this is not the. It's not, not the, a large opener. No, not no. A large how do you opener. sit on that? Well, you, you can sit on it. You can but, sit on it. Yeah, but, but how do you just stay sitting on it? I think you stay to and then it's very hard to leave. I think that's what happens with the job. I think you have to ba- you have to balance like a little top. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> and engage then you those quads. There. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, aha! I oh. said to myself. This may clear up the Burgo, Burgo, Burgo master story. Uh, finally, we uh, uh, he's gotten to the conclusion we already got yeah. to. Yeah, we already knew. Uh, mm-hmm. I rejoined Hans Gerner, who was now waiting for me at the edge of the pit. Now, sir, cried he, where would you like to go? First, let's sit down for a while. We shall see presently. <laughs> okay. Let's all poop in a jug. Yeah. <laughs> no. We have to wait until I need to. <laughs> Uh, I sat down on a large stone while the rural guard cast his falcon eyes over the village to see if there chanced to be any trespassers in the garden. I carefully examined the glazed vase of which nothing but splinters remained. Oh, ouch. After everything we've said, that was very upsetting. Yeah, very splinters? Upsetting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what? The He's jug. sitting on it. Wait, I'm getting so Wait. confused. Oh, the jug. I... Think I- the glazed I vase. Oh, different. Oh, I just thought it was a different thing. glazed thing. How are there so many glazed items? I thought it was that. Sometimes they use a lot of different it descriptive been, maybe, words for maybe, the jug. Maybe yeah. it's just like the, the glazed Perhaps, glass bottle. Yeah. Or... Glass bottle. Well, he said earthenware. Earthenware yeah, glazed right. jug. I don't know. We'll okay. find well, out. Well, you know, I mean, we'll find out. We should probably stop interrupting as much. These fragments, like the <laughs> these fragments presented the appearance of a funnel lined with wool. What? Okay. It was impossible for me to perceive its purpose. I then read the piece Same. of a letter written in an easy running and firm hand. I transcribe cool. it here below, word for word. Oh, okay. shit. It okay. seems to follow Good. the other half of the sheet, for which I looked vainly all about the runes. Okay, here okay, we go. Here we okay, here we go. Let's Great. Let's okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> My microacoustic ear trumpet, thus, has the double advantage of infinitely multiplying the intensity of sounds and of introducing them into the ear without causing the observer the least discomfort. You would never have imagined, dear master, the charm which one feels in perceiving these thousands of 
uh, imperceptible sounds which are confounded on a fine summer day in an immense murmuring. The bumblebee has his song as well as the nightingale. The honeybee is the warbler of the mosses. Mosses, I don't know. The cricket is the lark of the tall grass. The maggot is the wren. It has only a sigh, but the sigh is melodious. This is the little. This is the little funnel. The, the little funnel that they. Found? I think this is the cistern or this is the itself. big cistern. It's funny because okay. cistern is also another word for toilet. Mm. It is. Everything in the story is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we read is either um, a metaphor for sex or a toilet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I that cleared up nothing. Well, there's more. Okay. Okay. This discovery from the point of view of sen- sentiment, which makes us live in the universal f- life, surpasses in its importance all that I could say on the matter. I don't know. Are we still in the letter or no? I'm confused. I don't know. After so much suffering, privations, and weariness, how happy it makes one to reap the rewards of all his labors. How the soul soars towards the divine author of all these microscopic worlds, the magnificent magnificence of which is revealed to us. Where now are the long hours of anguish, hunger, contempt, which overwhelmed us before? Gone, sir. Gone. Tears of gratitude moisten our eyes. Wait, what? Because I don't of the, know the, what, what is what happening. They found the ear? Just because of yeah. the echoing and the thing, it like makes it easy to hear. And they're, I don't know. But if you have to be in the cistern to hear stuff good, that's like not that great. <laughs> hear stuff good. You know, like yeah. it's like now you have to live I, in that cistern. I don't even know what that's what that to guy say. was doing. Okay. You got to go to the cistern to hear stuff good. good. <laughs> Sorry, that was a stereotype of a southern. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so sensitive. Uh, one is proud so to have achieved uh, through suffering new joys for humanity and to have contributed to its mental development. But how, howsoever vast, howsoever admirable may be the first fruits of my microacoustic ear trumpet, these do not uh, delimit its advantages. There are more positive ones, more material, and ones which may be expressed in figures. Just as the telescope brought the discovery of myriads of worlds performing their harmonious revolutions in infinite space, so also will my microacoustic ear trumpet extend the sense of the unhearable beyond all possible bounds. Thus, sir, the circulation of the blood and the fluids of the body will not give me pause. You shall hear them Mm -hmm. flow with the impetuosity of cataracts. You shall perceive them so distinctly as to startle you. The slightest irregularity of the pulse, the least obstacle, is striking and the produces the same effect as a rock against which the waves of a torrent are dashing. So this uh, is so like an, he's like you can what? hear really well. Yeah, this is just this. an ad for he, his trumpet. Yeah. yeah, he thinks he invented the ear version of a telescope. Yeah, he's like mm-hmm. you can hear now my you body. Can, you can hear the stars as well as see the stars. Uh huh. Okay, I'm good though. <laughs> I'd like to hear a star. Yeah. I'd be that's interested in hearing a like star. Horrifying. But like you can't hear anything in space, right? Yeah, space is silent. Well, well, there's more of this letter and maybe perhaps oh, we'll be able to finally hear in space okay. with the microacoustic here we go. Oh, Available trumpet. now. We'll find out. Okay. Did I just miss my place? I don't think so. Oh, no. Here we go. It is doubtless an immense conquest in the development of our knowledge of psychology and pathology, yeah. but this is not the point on which I would emphasize. Okay. Upon applying your ear to the ground, sir, you may hear the mineral water spring up. This is what I'm talking about. He's going to say you can hear in space. You may hear the mineral water springing up at immeasurable depths. You may judge of their volume, their currents, and the obstacles which they meet. Do you wish to go further? Enter a subterranean vault, which is so constructed as to gather a quantity of loud sounds. Then at night, when the world sleeps, when nothing will be confused with the interior noises of our globe. Listen. (laughs) Sir, all that it is possible for me to tell you at the present moment, for in the midst of my profound misery, of my privations, and often of my despair, I am left only a few lucid instants to pursue my geological observations. And all that I can affirm is that the seething glow of glowworms, the explosions of boiling fluids, is something terrifying and sublime, which can only mm-hmm. be compared to the impression of the astronomer whose glass, glass fathoms depths of limitless extent. Nevertheless, why, this is not one piece of paper long. This, he needed like and 10 pieces of paper. And he's saying some of it is missing. I know. Right. There's no way there's all no of way. this is he, written on a piece. Dude no found way. a thesis. Unless yeah. old paper were was like were oh, 10 maybe feet it was like long. rolls. It was just parchment or scroll. <laughs> he made it sound like somebody like did just like the tiniest yeah. strip off yeah. the end of a loose leaf 
piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, I must avow that these impressions should be studied further and classified in a methodical manner in order that d- definite conclusions may be derived therefrom. Likewise, as soon as you shall have designed, dear and noble master, to transmit the little sum for use at Newstead, as I asked, to supply my first needs, we shall see our way to an understanding in regard to the establishment of three great subterranean observatories. This is a manifesto. One in the valley of Catania. It's a letter. Catania another in Iceland, then a third in Kapak Urin, Songe, or Kayambe Urin. So he's the writing deep... <laughs> to his investor. I think. <laughs> yeah. It's a business plane, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The deepest of the cor- Cordilleras, and consequently, here the letter stopped. So <gasps> oh, finally shit. it's been ripped. Oh, no. This is okay, the part okay. with the rip. Oh, no. Uh, here the letter stopped. I left. I let my hands fall in stupef- stupefac- stupefaction. Stupefaction? Stupefaction. Stupefaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stupefaction. That's a word. I didn't know that. Had I read the conceptions... This show is a teaching show. Mm-hmm. I know. Well, I haven't read a book in about 20 years. Uh, I'm a, an idiot. That's not true. You read a Goosebumps book for it's us. True. It's true. Barely. I barely made it out alive. <laughs> I let my hands fall in stupefaction. Had I read the conceptions of an idiot or the inspirations of a genius which had been realized, what am I to say? To think. So this man, <laughs> this miserable creature living at the bottom of a burrow like a fox, dying of hunger had had perhaps one of those inspirations which the supreme being sends on earth to enlighten future generations. Wait, okay. And then we hung him with a necktie. Hung, I know. Yeah, or depressed him enough to kill he, so he killed himself. And this man had hanged himself in disgust, despair. So yeah, that's what he killed oh, himself. Oh, shit. Maybe. They did that to this poor man. No one had answered his prayers, though he asked only for a crust of bread in exchange for his, dis- his discovery. It was horrible. Long, long I sat there dreaming, thanking heaven for having limited my intelligence to the needs of ordinary life, for not having desired to make me a superior man in the community of martyrs. At length, the rural guardsman, seeing me with fixed gaze and mouth agape, made so bold as to touch me on the shoulder. Mr. How dare. <laughs> Don't fucking touch me! <laughs> I'm going through a moment right now. Don't touch me. <laughs> Mr. Christian, said he, see, it's getting late. The burgomaster must have come back from the council. Ha! That's a fact, (laughs) cried I, (laughs) crumpling up the paper. Come on. We descended the hill. My worthy cousin met me with a smiling face at the threshold of his house. Well, well, Christian, so you found no trace of the imbecile who hanged himself? Ugh, so rude. No. Disrespect the dead. Yeah. No, I thought as much. He was some lunatic who escaped from Steffensfeld or somewhere. Faith. He did well to hang himself. When Uh, one is good for nothing... That's the simplest what way. What the for shit it. is this? The following day, I left Hirschwiller. I shall never return. That's it. What? That's the story. Man, bread, bread, sad stuff. <laughs> Don't fucking shrug at us. You know, um, the, the hearing things. I, 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 I get it. I was at um, Natural History Museum, and they had like these special microphones hooked up to roots of trees, uh-huh. and you could hear the trees like sucking up the water. It was pretty cool. <gasps> So oh. you use this old leprechaun man's yeah. invention? <laughs> that, story, a, that was by history. me. That was my story. So it's based on a true story. So based this man story. invented some crazy hearing technology, perhaps the oh. precursor to a hearing aid, maybe? Oh, mm-hmm. maybe. And then mm-hmm. Christian stole it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then these Even guys just Even though he tried to act through. like... This was... Oh, yeah, yeah. And he just stole this thing. I mean, this has had to have happened about many things in the history of Oh, I'm sure. History. We have stolen so much from the leprechauns. The mm-hmm. leprechauns. It's despicable. We've stolen. Will uh, of the Wisp. Reparations. Being jolly. We stole being jolly from them. Yeah. We were never happy before leprechauns mm-hmm. and we, we took that from them. wanting mm-hmm. money. We appropriated jolliness from mm-hmm. leprechauns. Mm-hmm. Also dancing, hopping from one leg to the yeah. other. Mm-hmm. Stole that from leprechauns. And wearing jig. green hats. Yeah. We stole jigs and wearing mm-hmm. green hats. Mm-hmm. Well. And going, shardy, 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 shy. I don't know where I'd be if I couldn't shout shardy, shardy, shardy. Shardy, shardy, shardy. Shardy, 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 shardy. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, fuck oh. me. I don't know. Oh, man. <laughs> embarrassing. I don't know what embarrassing. the leprechauns say. Embarrassing. <laughs> I just know wow. we went to space once. Insensitive. Insensitive. Well, that was a story. Yeah. <laughs> if, if nothing else... I would say those were words uh-huh. that had a beginning, mm-hmm. a middle, yes, and sort of an end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this. I like the ending. The, was, the guy's just like, peace, I'm going to leave. Well, I like an ending that's sort of like 
um, doesn't just wrap it up in a bow. Uh, he's mm-hmm. doing something kind of terrible at the end there. And I don't know. I find end- endings like that interesting. Well, he was like he was disgusted with his cousin and he was like, right. I want nothing to do with this village. Yeah. And you're part in your uh, persecution of this tiny leprechaun man. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I kind of like the ending. I liked yeah. the, the ending. Whole thing Me was too. Kind of but it was like, curious. huh? Mm-hmm. Everything was too, huh? It was too long. Well, we'll edit it, and when we start this, I'm not going to be involved in the new podcast, but uh, I'll mm-hmm. be happy to look over the manuscript when you guys edit this mm-hmm. and okay. start reading the new revised mm-hmm. public domain. Because honestly, it's public domain, so you guys could just adapt and do what you will with all this yeah. stuff. That's true. And that's true. I you could just change that. all the names on that, and you could literally be like, here's our version of the story. This is actually a pretty good idea. <laughs> 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 that'll be the that'll be, um, that'll be the Patreon content. Yeah, yeah there yeah, you go. We'll a, just a uh, write books for the Patreon. Yeah. Just whole whole, whole entire books would, every week. But it could be like a book, just like uh, stolen. You could just literally say, "Well, you stole this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. And we can be like the guy in the story. Yeah. Yeah. So oh my god! And then be disgusted with ourselves. Yeah. Full circle. Yep. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on and yeah. doing the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mike. Sorry um, for my bad comprehension level. No, that stealth. was a very difficult story. All three story. of us were really struggling Lots through of questions. That. I was stressed. I'll be honest with you. I was stressed out the whole time. Really? I, yeah. Sometimes Are your palms sweaty? I, uh, Mine are this sweaty, one is a bit clammy, it's, it's but this a little one's doing clammy. fine. Did you know that if you sing in here, uh, like do like like two um, deep breaths, like really quick, like it mimics a fear response and it creates. Uh, I went to a fear exhibit at um, the California Science Center, and it was just people going, ah! yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pretty cool. It was like you put your hand on a thing and it was like measuring your whatevers, and yeah. like if you did that, it would like spike, and then like your hand would get clammier. <laughs> Um, oh my god, they're wet. They're soaking. Right <laughs> it's now. like, it's like oh, dripping, dripping all over. I'm so oily. I'm like it's those buckets. frogs. You're like those oily frogs. Um, do you have anything you would like to plug? Oh, just a podcast that I do about theme parks called Podcast the Ride. Uh, that's it for right now, I guess. Uh, I don't got nothing else. <laughs> Where can people find you on the internet? Oh, uh, Fat Carlson, P H A T C A R L S O N, at Twitter, you know, Instagram. It's the same name across all whatever is still around. I guess it's really just Instagram and LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So LinkedIn is still around, but that don't have my handle on there. I don't have my cool handle. That ain't got handle. no handle. That's so I like, like, don't that ain't got my really handle. use it at all. No, yeah. Uh, every time someone adds me on LinkedIn, I'm like, how dare you? I'm not going <laughs> to say yes to that. I guess <laughs> na- I am on Snapchat, but I haven't used it in many years. Oh, my gosh. I forgot Snapchat. about my Snapchat. Mm. I made an account, opened it once, and then never again. I just like the filters. They're fun. I, I like to play with it. Mm. But I haven't played with it in a long time. I just never send anything to anybody. I just like to use the filters. I'm like, that was cool. <laughs> that one's for me. <laughs> it's the social network that I use just for myself. <laughs> the anti-social network. Uh, mm. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if you want to help out our show, please leave us a lovely review on Apple Podcasts or the podcast app of your choice if it has a rating system. Uh, writing a review is the thing that helps our show the most. Um, so thank you to those of you who have already done that. That's super nice. And, um, yeah, if you want to throw us a bone, do that. Yeah. Uh, thank you once more to, uh, my boyfriend, Mike Carlson. Ooh, <laughs> thanks, Mike. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> Surprise ending. And, uh, we'll see you next week. Keep it lit. Forever. <laughs> dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by dog. Brett Boehm. Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter 